In April of 2024, a 911 caller in Las Vegas reported seeing a crazed homeless man sitting on top of his victim and eating the individual's face next to a bus stop. Officers arrived at the scene shortly before 5 in the morning to find 29-year-old Colin Ichiro Chek kneeling on the ground next to a deceased man with his face and hands covered in blood and biological matter in his hair, mouth and on his clothing. The victim, Kenneth Brown, was missing an ear and an eye and had a wound to the back of the head. Czech reportedly claimed that he had killed Brown in self-defense, claiming that he heard voices telling him to do it while admitting that he did not know the victim. He had been awake for five days straight, believing he was possessed when, in reality, he was found to be high on methamphetamine. The first 911 calls about the accused cannibal were made about an hour prior to law enforcement's arrival on the scene. He was seen attacking another individual, but onlookers had pulled him away from the victim. Czech approached Brown a short while later and struck him in the back of the head, causing him to fall and hit his head on the pavement. The accused cannibal was charged with murder, mayhem and attempted murder. He was deemed competent to stand trial and remains in custody as he awaits his next court date. Number 20. Joshua Freymouth In late September of 2024, a homeless Ohio man was accused of trying to snatch a boy from outside his home in Alliance. Clad in a blonde wig, makeup, pearls, and high heels, 39-year-old Joshua Freymuth allegedly tried to lure the boy and his dog away from the residence by saying, I need to talk to you. According to police, Freymuth, who also reportedly goes by Vicky, tried to grab the boy when he refused to go with him voluntarily. The victim pulled himself away with help from his pet dog, who reportedly attacked the suspect. Freymuth fled the scene and was arrested a short while later on suspicion of attempted kidnapping. Just days earlier, Freymuth had been arrested for having methamphetamine in his car. During the previous incident, police pulled him over after receiving complaints that he was driving around and trying to talk to kids. The drugs were found during the search of his car and Freymuth was released a short while later. Following his more recent arrest, Freymuth denied trying to abduct the victim, claiming he wasn't even in the area when the incident supposedly took place. A grand jury declined to indict him on the attempted kidnapping charge, while opting to indict him on an aggravated drug possession charge. In a statement following the grand jury hearing, the Alliance police noted that there was no actual evidence that Freya Muth was trying to talk to children. Additionally, Investigators had noticed major inconsistencies between statements people had made and the suspect's actual whereabouts and movements. Freya Muth's drug case is ongoing. Number 19. Daniel Sidney Dale A Mississippi criminal defense attorney is accused of smuggling contraband into the Hines County Jail while posing as legal counsel for detainees. During a visit to the facility in August of 2024, 49-year-old Daniel Sidney Dale was caught with a briefcase full of marijuana, blue scales, cell phones, chargers, and tobacco products. Jail staff grew suspicious of Dale after seeing him hand items off to two inmates on surveillance video. The alleged co-conspirators, William Antonio Harness Jr. and Marcel Cornelius Martin are currently detained on separate murder charges. Dale was detained and questioned following the discovery of the briefcase's contents. According to authorities, he visited the jail 10 times between June of 2024 and his arrest two months later. He's facing two counts of conspiracy and three counts of introduction of contraband. Records show that Dale is not currently in custody, indicating that he's most likely free on bond. Number 18. Robert Cole Parmalee 40-year-old Robert Cole Palmley of Grants Pass, Oregon, is accused of traveling across the country to stalk University of Connecticut basketball star Paige Bukers after first stalking her online. He was arrested near Bradley International Airport in September 2024 after crossing paths with a state trooper who ran his name and found that he was wanted on a warrant out of Oregon for allegedly setting a home on fire with its occupants and their pets inside. Palmley told the trooper that he was on his way to see Bukers and he had an engagement ring and lingerie in his possession. The stalking investigation continued while he was detained on the outstanding warrant, and he has since been charged with breach of peace, electronic stalking, and harassment. According to ESPN, Parmalee first came to the attention of Yukon police after university officials received rambling emails from him claiming that he was a member of the royal family and highlighting his obsession with a female basketball player. He obsessed over Brookers in his social media posts 
And while there was nothing outwardly criminal about the content, his behavior was alarming and in some cases threatening. Shortly before traveling to Connecticut, Parmalee wrote that he was going to propose to Bukas and get her expelled from the college. Bukas never responded to his harassment, which included direct messages, and she told the Yukon police that she was scared for her own safety and the safety of her teammates. Following Parmalee's arrest, the judge issued a no-contact order of protection and set bond at $100,000 with strict supervision requirements, including GPS monitoring. He has a lengthy criminal history dating back to 2002, which includes prior arrests for harassment, criminal mischief, and more. According to the most recent available updates, Parmalee remains behind bars while awaiting his next court date. Number 17. David Hampson Nicknamed The Silent Man, 53-year-old David Hampson is a serial offender who habitually blocks traffic and never explains why. In fact, he doesn't say anything at all. Hailing from the Welsh coastal city of Swansea, he simply stands in the road and prevents cars from going any further until police arrest him. Whenever Hampson is taken into custody, he refuses to speak with law enforcement, judges, and court-appointed psychiatrists. He's landed in jail at least 10 times over the years, and he acts the same way every time. But that's not what Hampson's real personality is like, according to his brother, John, who claims that he only engages in the bizarre traffic blocking ritual in order to go to jail, where food and shelter are free. Describing his brother as a spoiled brat, John told the son that David is actually the opposite of mute. He actually never stops talking. Based on David's patterns and habits, the claim makes sense. Following his most recent release from jail in October of 2024, he was arrested again that very same day. Furthermore, John claims that David is much smarter than he acts and that he suffers no cognitive setbacks like one might think based on his unusual demeanor. Number 16. Phi Lee Din Nguyen in a shocking crime that was captured on video in Casey, Texas, in October 2024, a machete-wielding arsonist set two of his neighbor's homes ablaze. In broad daylight, 46-year-old Phi Lee Din Nguyen could be seen crossing the street with a red gas can in hand and dousing Andy Heredia's house with gasoline. He lit the house on fire, but Heredia managed to extinguish the flames before any serious damage could be caused. Noyim was also captured on video doing the same thing at the home of Jackie Gray, whose surveillance camera alerted her to the man's presence. Gray rushed outside and confronted Noyim, who quietly proceeded to pour gasoline on the house as she yelled that there were kids inside. Once again, the homeowner put out the blaze with no major damage done to the property. Gray later told local station KHOU that Noyim returned to the scene with the samurai-style machete and tried attacking her. He was also accused of threatening a responding deputy with the weapon. Law enforcement had dealt with Noyen during previous calls to the community, and he's reportedly known among neighbors for odd behavior. Noyen was charged with two counts of first-degree felony arson, aggravated assault against a public servant, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He remains held at the Harris County Jail with bond, set at $200,000, and had been ordered to undergo a mental evaluation. The judge sternly warned him that if he makes bond and violates the conditions of his release, even once, he'll land back in jail without bond pending the outcome of the case. Number 15. Andrew Clyde Swafford In early 2019, a group of female University of North Carolina college students began to think a ghost had invaded their apartment in Greensboro. Things often went missing or were found out of place. Handprints appeared on the bathroom wall, and the women had ruled out all logical explanations that they could think of. One day, one of the residents, Maddie, heard a strange noise coming from inside her bedroom closet. She called out, Who's there? And a male voice responded, identifying himself as Drew. Maddie opened the closet door to find a grown man wearing her clothes and shoes and holding a backpack filled with her clothing. Later identified as 30-year-old Andrew Clyde Swafford, the intruder begged Maddie not to call the police. Worried about what he might do if she did contact law enforcement, she surreptitiously took photos of the situation and sent them to her boyfriend, prompting him to call the police and head over to the apartment. Police arrested Swafford on a misdemeanor break-in and enter in charge? Maddie and her roommates were left shaken by the ordeal, especially because they kept their door locked and were unsure how Swafford broke in. Even more shockingly, this wasn't the first time the women had encountered an unwelcome presence in their home. Just months earlier, they had arrived home to find two men in their living room. Their locks had been changed after the previous incident, making it even more alarming that someone had managed to get inside yet again. While the outcome of Swafford's criminal case is unclear, the women decided not to chance any more bizarre encounters and immediately moved out of the apartment. Number 14. Olivia Jordan and Richard Carlson 
an Arizona woman's bizarre manner of walking during what began as a routine traffic stop alerted law enforcement to a hidden stash of deadly drugs. 20-year-old Olivia Jordan and 32-year-old Richard Carlson were initially pulled over in Yavapai County for moving violations, but deputies quickly noticed things that piqued their suspicions of illegal drug activity. A police canine detected a stash of 19 fentanyl pills and some methamphetamine inside the vehicle resulting in the decision to arrest Jordan and Carlson as the deputies prepared to take the pair to jail. They noticed Jordan walking funny. She was initially uncooperative when confronted with suspicions that she was hiding something in her pants, but a reminder that she'd incur a felony charge for smuggling contraband into jail was enough for her to come clean. The young woman reached into her pants and pulled out a bag of nearly 450 fentanyl pills with an estimated street value of $10,000. Carlson admitted to his involvement in the sale of narcotics in the area, and police also discovered that he had a warrant out for his arrest on a forgery charge in neighboring Maricopa County. The suspects were booked into custody on drug possession and sale charges, while the investigation into their drug operation continued. At the time, police encouraged anyone with information about the illegal activity to contact them, but the outcome of the case is unclear. Number 13. Anthony Melhaff a normal workday took a bizarre turn for restaurant employees in Buck Meadows, California. In August of 2024, when 40-year-old Anthony Melhaff approached a pregnant staff member and said, the spirits led me to you and your baby belongs to me, and what time is your break because I will be waiting for you. According to reports, he then proceeded to steal several drinks, assaulted another employee, and sped off in his car toward Yosemite National Park. As the lead singer of the Los Angeles-based hardcore punk rock group, Cancer Christ, Melhoff, is no stranger to bizarre behavior, but his recent rampage was unusual even for him. Park rangers tried pulling him over, but he crashed his car, then stole a bike and kept right on going. Melhaff went to the Tanayo Lodge Hotel, where he grabbed a knife and threatened employees. He then went outside, removed his pants, then re-entered the hotel, where he warned customers that they would be in danger if they didn't leave. After failing to kidnap the business manager, Melhaff stole his car. He eventually crashed the vehicle and was taken into custody. Melhaff was combative toward Mariposa, County deputies during his arrest, but law enforcement managed to keep the situation under control. He's currently being held at the Mariposa County Jail with bail set at $100,000. Following Mel Half's arrest, it was revealed that he was acting strangely for days leading up to the incident that landed him in custody. One business owner, Steve Anker, said that he was concerned enough about the man's behavior to call the police, but that he didn't dial 911. He told the Union Democrat that he gave law enforcement Melhaff's license plate and car information, and he described the suspect as scary. Another business owner reported seeing Melhaff screaming at the sky and acting like a complete psycho, while a local resident posted a photo of him from his band's social media page along with an ominous warning, keep an eye out for this weirdo. Number 12. Jonathan Gay a Philadelphia woman was exiting a taxi cab in Rittenhouse Square one day in early 2017 when a stranger approached the car and pulled her out of the vehicle by her hair. He then pulled the driver out of the taxi while somehow managing to undress, then got behind the wheel and sped through the park, doing a burnout and hitting at least three other vehicles along the way. Many bystanders fled in order to avoid being hit, but one brave witness decided to do the exact opposite. At the first opportunity, an army veteran opened the door and began wrestling with the suspect in an attempt to remove him from the vehicle. Others joined in to help wrestling the unclothed man to the ground and restraining him until the police arrived. 51-year-old Jonathan Gay was charged with reckless endangerment, simple assault, robbery of a motor vehicle, driving under the influence and more. At the time of his arrest, he was on probation for theft and receiving stolen property. In the previous case, he had initially been charged with aggravated assault, but the charge was dropped as part of a plea agreement. Little else is known about Gay who had worked as a licensed auctioneer at an earlier point in his life. Following the taxicab incident, he pleaded guilty as charged. He was sentenced to a maximum of 23 months in prison, followed by five years of probation. Number 11. Giovanni Bola a Florida doctor hell-bent on revenge decided to get payback against a fellow practitioner by dousing the door to the victim's medical practice with gallons of urine. Dr. Giovanni Bola did this at least twice in July and August of 2024 when he was seen on 
Surveillance footage coming and going from the office in St. Petersburg. He had previously owned the practice before selling it to its current owner, Dr. Dylan Dinesh. For reasons that have yet to be revealed by the authorities, Baller had become upset about something related to the business. The foul-smelling liquid destroyed the building's door, which will cost $1,500 to replace, and the total amount of losses resulting from the bizarre attacks is estimated at $6,000. Baller was charged with felony criminal mischief and was released from jail after posting a $5,000 cash bond. This wasn't his first run-in with the law. Back in 2003, Baller was fined $10,000 and sentenced to community service for improperly prescribing medication to an online patient without conducting a physical exam or issuing a diagnosis. He pleaded not guilty to his current charges and is free on bond as he awaits his next court hearing. Number 10. Amber Matthews In a cringe-worthy act of rage that went viral for all the wrong reasons, in October of 2024, a New Jersey woman was filmed ripping Greek flags down from outside a Montclair gyro restaurant while going on an anti-Israel rant. 23-year-old TikToker Amber Matthews, who goes by Ambermelia on social media, had mistaken the string of decorative Greek flags for Israeli flags, and she only had herself to blame for her subsequent arrest and the backlash she received for her behavior, which she proudly filmed and posted online. The actual incident had occurred seven months earlier. Police launched an investigation after receiving a complaint from the owner of Effie's Gyro, but Matthews had not gotten in any trouble prior to the footage appearing on social media. Her identity had remained elusive, even after surveillance footage revealed that she had stood outside the restaurant and handed out pro-Palestinian brochures a week before the flag-ripping incident. In the video, Matthews could be heard ranting and raving about genocide as she angrily ripped the flags and asked employees what they were looking at. She announced her disdain for Zionism while holding a fist full of the flags as staff members looked on with confused expressions on their faces. One of the workers politely informed Matthews that the flags were Greek, generating a half-hearted, my bad, in response. Matthews even admitted to the embarrassing mix-up in the TikTok video, which was ultimately what led police to identify her as the suspect. As the footage racked up millions of views, law enforcement finally closed in on the vandal, who was arrested for bias and intimidation. The case is ongoing, with the next court date scheduled for early December. Number 9. Clyde Kabulison on Halloween night in 2023, 911 callers in Las Vegas complained about an unclothed man walking into traffic. An officer approached the man, later identified as 29-year-old Clyde Kabulison, and attempted to start a conversation, but he had no interest in engaging in rational dialogue. He was uncooperative, leading to a struggle between him and the officer, during which he punched the cop repeatedly and then stole his patrol truck. Kabulison led law enforcement on a brief chase before crashing into another vehicle, injuring its two occupants. One of the victims, Rico Abrera, suffered a fractured neck and difficulty breathing, and he was unable to move the right side of his body immediately after the crash. He and the other victim both suffered permanent injuries. As police encroached on the scene, Kabulison made a last-ditch attempt to flee on foot, but he was apprehended. He acted erratic and aggressive, and his demeanor led officers to suspect that he was under the influence of drugs. Kabulison's brother told investigators that he may have used cocaine or marijuana earlier that evening, and that he could be in the throes of a mental health crisis. Authorities charged the seemingly troubled suspect with 10 crimes, including driving under the influence, grand larceny, reckless driving, duty to stop at the scene of an accident and battery on a protected person in a crowdfunding campaign asking for contributions towards Kabulison's legal costs. A man named Ryan Hoang described the defendant as someone with a big heart who was suffering a psychotic episode at the time of his arrest. He noted that Kabulison would spend the rest of his life regretting his actions, but the plea for donations went largely unacknowledged, with the campaign ultimately generating less than $2,000 of its $50,000 fundraising goal. In early 2024, Kabulison pleaded guilty to two charges, including DUI, resulting in substantial bodily harm and was sentenced to two to five years in prison. Number 8. Timothy Smith and David Daniels In June of 2015, footage of a naked man running through a Pike County, Kentucky Walmart appeared on social media. Witnesses at the store in South Williamson said that the suspect disrobed and streaked through the store, wearing only shoes, socks, and a Halloween mask while his friend, 
filmed the stunt. At one point during the video, the suspect poured two gallons of milk on himself while yelling that he was on fire. The men eventually fled the store in a waiting getaway car. When Pike County Sheriff Rodney Scott saw the video, he thought about how he wouldn't want to encounter that kind of scene while out shopping. He didn't understand why anyone would engage in that type of behavior, and he felt that it was important to hold the suspects accountable for the unappealing display, noting that indecent exposure is a serious offense. Three days after the video went viral, police arrested the accused streaker, 24-year-old Timothy Smith and the cameraman, 19-year-old David Daniels. Both defendants avoided prison time, and their reason for pulling the prank remain a mystery. Number 7. Teresa Dunlavey In July of 2024, police in Key West, Florida responded to a call about a man passed out in public with his pants down behind the city's statue of Cuban independence leader Jose Marti. Officers arrived at the scene at 6.30 a.m. after receiving reports about someone vigorously participating in a highly inappropriate activity that should only happen behind closed doors. Identified as a 35-year-old homeless woman from Oklahoma named Teresa Dunlavey, she pulled her pants up as the police approached. She seemed genuinely clueless about why law enforcement had been called to the scene, but there were multiple witnesses who provided similar descriptions of what they had seen. Dunlavey was arrested on suspicion of misdemeanor indecent exposure and was booked into county jail with bond set at $5,000. She appears to have no prior cases in Monroe County and records show that she pleaded no contest to the crime and was sentenced to time served. Number 6. Chiron Thomas in a bizarre prank that was captured on video in March of 2017, a Florida man set up a tray table and ate breakfast in the middle of a crosswalk during the morning rush hour in Lakeland. 21-year-old Chiron Thomas could be seen calmly eating pancakes and bacon, while traffic backed up at the intersection, seemingly unbothered that he was preventing commuters from reaching their destination. He even remembered to bring syrup and had a small TV set up on the table while onlookers laughed in disbelief and amusement. Thomas was gone by the time police arrived at the scene, but officers caught up with him at his home nearby. During an interview with Fox 13 Tampa Bay, he didn't seem too worried about the potential consequences of the prank. Both he and his friend who filmed the viral video, Travis Riley, acknowledged that he had put his safety at risk by staging the stunt in one of the city's busiest and most dangerous intersections. When asked how they felt about their sudden internet fame, Riley acted like it was no big deal, telling the reporter that they were used to getting a lot of attention. He said that he hoped the video would serve its intended purpose of promoting their rap music, which was already on YouTube. Thomas was fined for obstructing the roadway and interfering with the flow of traffic but avoided any serious legal consequences for his unusual ad campaign. Number 5. Cesar Sayoc A troubled Florida man with a long history of past arrests and financial problems landed himself a decades-long sentence in federal prison after taking a sudden interest in politics in 2018. The amateur bodybuilder and former exotic dancer had already been convicted of a prior bomb threat charge when he mailed pipe bombs to 16 of Donald Trump's biggest critics. Luckily for the victims, the devices were built improperly and wouldn't have detonated despite containing ingredients that are typically found in the type of explosive he was trying to make. Sayok had packed the shoddy bombs into manila envelopes, placed postage stamps on each envelope, and dropped the packages in the mail. The FBI was quick to investigate the alarm in packages and it wasn't long before Sayok was swarmed by federal agents outside an auto parts store in Plantation. In the months leading up to his arrest, he had shown a sudden devotion to right-wing politics, while becoming fixated on conspiracy theories about one of the bomb recipients, billionaire George Soros. He ended up pleading guilty to 16 counts each of using a weapon of mass destruction, interstate transportation of an explosive device, conveying a threat in interstate commerce and the illegal mailing of explosives with the intent to kill or injure another. Sayok's defense attorney described him as a confused man who had trouble controlling his emotions. Meanwhile, the judge overseeing the case concluded that Sayok could have built the bombs properly but had consciously chosen not to and that his intention was most likely to scare the recipients without doing any actual physical damage. This was a primary factor to the court's decision to sentence Sayok to 20 years in prison, when he could have easily been put away for life. Number 4. Austin Brett Sherbert In late November of 2019, an Arizona man stole a disabled woman's wheelchair while riding in a light rail car in Phoenix. Later identified as 26-year-old Austin Brett Sherbert, he was seen wrestling with a woman who was knocked out of the chair and onto the floor. She screamed for help, 
prompting Good Samaritans to notice what was happening and rush over to her aid. In the meantime, Sherbert tried running away with the wheelchair, but bystanders stopped him and took it back. They gave the wheelchair back to the victim while Sherbert fled the scene on foot. Police released surveillance stills of the suspect who wore a red pullover, jeans, and distinctive reindeer sleepers. It was the slippers which helped lead to his identification and subsequent arrest on charges of robbery, attempt to kidnap, assault, and vulnerable adult abuse. Following Sherbert's arrest, his ex-wife told Fox 10 Phoenix that she had received death threats from strangers who saw that she shared a last name with the defendant and assumed she was still married to him. She said she was disgusted by her ex-husband's actions, especially since they were parents to a special needs child and clarified that she hadn't spoken to Sherbert in a year. The ex-wife also highlighted Sherbert's trouble in past, telling the news outlet that he got kicked out of the Marines for stealing and had a history of aggressive behavior. Sherbert pleaded guilty to robbery and was sentenced to two years in prison. Number 3. Lena Tantash Irish filmmaker Charlotte Rice endured a living nightmare after falling victim to an obsessed stalker who refused to accept that their short-lived fling was over. The 50-year-old had met 44-year-old Lena Tantash back in 2007 and had tried to remain cordial after deciding that he no longer wanted to see her romantically. They had only dated for a few weeks but Tantash became fixated on Rice, who she believed had an obligation to honor a 21-clause love contract that he was unaware of and had never agreed to. At the time, stalking wasn't a crime in Ireland leaving Rice with extremely limited recourse for the thousands of phone calls and emails he received from Tantash, as well as any in-person lurking that she carried out in her quest to force him into her life. The harassment eventually got so bad that Rice moved to the UK, but Tantash tracked him down through a private investigator and moved to London so she could continue tormenting her target. Like with many stalkers, Tantash's behavior only escalated with time. Regardless of any measures Rice took in an attempt to make the stalking stop, she contacted his friends and family and extended the harassment to his co-workers and any woman she thought Rice was dating. But her actions eventually caught up with her and in 2018, she was sentenced to four years in prison for stalking. She was also banned from contacting her victims under any circumstances, but has been accused of breaching no contact orders since her conviction. Today's topic was requested by Greyhounds7983. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Nathan Duran In April of 2023, cell phone footage of an unclothed man walking in the middle of a New Mexico highway went viral on social media. Later identified as Nathan Duran, he was spotted by an officer as he strolled in the middle of the southbound lanes of Interstate 25 in Albuquerque. Traffic came to a standstill while a police car weaved around waiting motorists and approached Duran near the San Mateo exit. The officer ordered Duran to get out of the road, but he ignored the command. He then charged at the officer, who deployed his taser three times in an attempt to subdue the suspect. Undeterred by the electrical shock, Duran tried to steal the officer's patrol car but was wrestled out of the vehicle. After being removed from the car, the raging suspect began yelling at other motorists. He then bit a backup officer's leg and was tased for a fourth time while a civilian stepped in and helped the cops get the situation under control. Duran was charged with assault, battery on a police officer, and auto theft. He was released from jail on his own recognizance following his arrest and the charges were ultimately dropped. Number 1. Sean Uribe On at least two occasions in 2024, 35-year-old Sean Uribe was accused of following women around in Miami department stores with a syringe and squirting an unknown liquid on their behinds. The first incident occurred in late June when witnesses alerted the victim to the accused creep's bizarre activity. In addition to spraying the woman with a mystery substance, Uribe reportedly filmed his activities but fled the scene as soon as he realized he'd caught the attention of bystanders. A very similar crime occurred in August at a Marshalls store, with the suspect matching the description of the perpetrator in the first incident. Once again, he sprayed a woman's buttocks with an unknown liquid while recording it with his cell phone. He walked away from the victim and left the store before she could confront him, but she was able to pick Uribe out in a police lineup, resulting in his arrest on suspicion of felony battery felony tampering with evidence and misdemeanor battery. During a search of the suspect's residence, police found additional syringes filled with a viscous white liquid, along with clothing 
matching the outfit that Uribe was wearing when the crimes occurred. When left alone in the interrogation room to call his father, he reportedly instructed his dad to remove some hard drives from his mother's home immediately and put them under lock and key. Law enforcement rushed over to the residence and intercepted the hard drives, along with additional evidence that was recovered during the search. Uribe remains free on bond amid the ongoing case. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have a job where you deal with eccentric customers daily or a job that's completely predictable but boring? Let us know in the comments section below.